Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, with another amazing indie wrestling interview. Of course, please check out everything Indie Mayhem Show on the iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the Facebook and YouTube page for Wrestling Mayhem Show. And uh, also, please check out all the shows over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including uh, past history of this show. Tons of interviews, well over 130-some interviews. I don't even know what number we're at at this point uh, with uh, pro wrestlers and people working around pro wrestling in, in over over the years. Uh, so some great lineups there. But with us today is a, a guy that I've been watching for a good long time here in the Pittsburgh area. Jimmy Vegas joins us. How you doing, man? I'm good, buddy. How are you? All right. So first of all, we got a little icebreaker, get to know you question for, for uh, the fans out there that maybe haven't heard of you. Shame on them. Uh, but uh, what was kind of your first memory that got you into uh, pro wrestling? Oh, man. I've been watching this stuff since I was a kid. Um, I used to go to Civic Arena with a buddy of mine and his older brother. Uh, I was a huge Iron Mike Sharp fan <laughs> back in the day. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a picture I'm trying to find that has – I had a sign that said Iron Mike Sharp Fan Club. Mm-hmm. He, took it in, he took it in the ring and walked around with it. He didn't rip it in half. You know, he was a heel. He came down, shook my hand. And I mind you, I'm like nine years old. And I'm like, this guy is awesome. He was a heel and he lost. You know what I mean? So that was one of my earliest memories. Um, you know, I mean, everybody liked Hulk Hogan. I was a macho man, Randy Savage fan. Uh, hell, I think I still got the shirt from when I was in fourth grade, the purple <laughs> shirt. Uh, doesn't fit anymore, but I still have it. So that's, I mean, that, it was early on, you know beating the hell out of stuffed animals and, you know, being the kid, local kids, backyard wrestling before backyard wrestling was cool. Um, shit. Me, Boomer Payne. I don't know if you guys remember Boomer Payne. He was a, a staple here in Pittsburgh for years. He's down in South Carolina. Now we went to elementary school together and we used to wrestle battle Royals on the playground at recess. So that was, that's, that's taking me back. Like, 1984. <laughs> so that, that's probably my early on memories of why I uh, I got into this whole crazy thing we call wrestling. That's great. So so what? Obviously, you you wanted to be involved. Uh, how did you go from even knowing that you could get involved at some point, or was it just kind of a <laughs> foregone conclusion for you? Man, I'll tell you what. This is back before the internet, so you couldn't. I mean, the internet was there, but I wasn't too savvy like I am now. Uh, <laughs> uh, you couldn't just Google you know, wrestling schools and stuff. I had no idea how you'd go about doing something like that. And uh, one night, uh, a buddy of mine, we were pre-gaming to go out to the South Side and uh, we were watching ECW wrestling. And uh, they'd, uh, you know, they used to do the one match in 65 commercials. Well, one of the commercials was, there's a wrestling school here in Pittsburgh now. And they gave you a phone number. I looked at him. I said, why wouldn't we not do this? And uh, I took the number down. I called it on Monday I interviewed with Shane Douglas on Tuesday and wrote him a check right there on the spot. And I was part of the ECW House of Hardcore 2. Um, and that was it, man. I was I was training to be a wrestler, and I thought I was going to be the next, uh, you know, big thing, if you will. <laughs> That's great. So, so were you were you directly trained then under Shane Douglas? Like, what what was the makeup of of the? It was it was uh, Shane and Dominic Danucci. Dominic did most of the training. Mm-hmm. Well, Shane was you know when Shane was in town. He would come in and, and, you know, do some stuff. Uh, this was right before he left ECW and went to WCW. So we had some time that we got a lot of time with Shane midway. Um, and then when, when he went to WCW, he ended up closing the school down. So um, that was it, man. We had like, Shane and I had a little, a little little heat back in the day. Everything's squashed now. We're good. Uh, <laughs> but there, there was a, a time where it was, uh, you know, he wanted more money and the school was already closed. Like I owed him a balance and I said, well, that's fine. I'll give you the balance, but where's my ECW TV appearance that I was promised in the contract, my tryout with ECW, my video uh, resume that was promised. He had a lot of promises in this thing, but um, yeah, at that point it, it was, it was, it was squashed. We, we went our separate ways. Um, I ended up working him a couple years later and he didn't really remember who I was <laughs> and uh, it turned into a heated almost a fist fight out in Moon Township in a bingo hall. Um, apparently somebody was doing something on the internet and talking shit on him and 
he thought it was me and this other guy, and I had no no clue what the hell he was talking about. But uh, Norm Connors, <laughs> I remember watching Norm cry, cry tears, and uh, you know, saying that you know he's been a target for years on the internet. He didn't want this two great workers to you know blah blah blah. <laughs> he was working us, working you know the whole nine yards. But after that, Shane and I, um, we, we you know we've done some business together over the past few years, as, as recent as like 2012, 2013. Mm-hmm. Um, we did a few things down in Nashville uh, together, and. Uh, He's out in Vegas, apparently, doing something. <laughs> that <there's> some, <laughs> I, I don't know. I keep getting these emails saying that this company's coming around, be ready to move to Vegas and this and that. And like, Jimmy Vegas ain't moving to Vegas. <laughs> I got roots here in Pittsburgh. I'm, I'm not going to Vegas by no means. So, <laughs> so you, I don't know. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not, you're not necessarily looking to live the gimmick at this point, right? No, the, the, the gimmick's coming to an end here. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, man. I got a couple... You know, a few years back, I said 2016 is probably going to be it for me. Um, I, do, do you ever really quit wrestling? No, I retired probably a hundred times. <laughs> if you remember back in the early mid 2000s, I was going to police academies. I was doing this, I was doing that, and I always felt, you know, here I come and I come back. You know what I mean? So I might say that December might be my last match, but. Uh, I'd be fooling myself. I'd be fooling everybody. And uh, I know Plummer, Plummer, if he's listening, he's, he's probably sweating balls right now. But uh, <laughs> I'll be around for 2017 for sure. It's probably going to be the, the, the final year of uh, Jimmy Vegas 2017. Uh, the, the Jimmy Vegas farewell tour, as it were, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Ozzy Osbourne, No More Tours tour that was in, like, what, 94? And he's maybe I think he's still touring. I saw him for the first time in 2000, so I probably saw him about four times after that. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, So, as long as you don't Terry Funk it, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got I got to know when to say when, you know. That's that's why I wanted to get you on because I know you have a, a very long career here in the Pittsburgh area and and, and abroad, and and you've really encountered like I look at the list. Of, of people that 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 you've encountered just in IWC alone, and that's yeah. most of my known history. Or even seeing you, um, I think the first time I might have seen you was the Steel City Fest uh, uh, that they did out at Ross River Ice Gardens, and yeah, Kurt yeah. Angle was there, and I think you might have teamed with Shane Douglas that day too. Uh, it was a bit of my introduction to you. Yeah, but but you've been in the ring with CM Punk, Cole Cabana, uh, Matt Hardy. Uh, you know, you you you've, you've hang with a lot of the guys that, that a lot of people know that have made it to the <laughs> WWE, done a lot of stuff. Um, and especially those early days of IWC, International Wrestling Cartel, I mean, that's something that is referenced, at least, you know, mildly, or Norm Connors and stuff like that in, like, like say, the CM Punk DVD. At that time, did it feel like something special was happening? That was a, that there was, like, a, a, a great group of guys that was coming through there? I'm not going to bullshit you. I just got the goosebumps by you saying that. Those are some of the best times of my life, man. It was... Uh... It was awesome. I mean, we had a lot of talent coming through there. And if anybody doesn't, you know, new fans now, they don't realize that IWC was a stepping stone for mm-hmm. a lot of guys to, to move on. We had a lot of connections with uh, the guys in the WWE, Kevin Kelly, Tom Pritchard. Um, those guys would come through. Norm had a, a, an eye for talent. And I, um, <laughs> he would bring in guys and I don't know, toot my own horn, but I was one of the guys that got to work the guys he brought in. You know, so I got to work Cabana and Punk, you know, and uh, Christopher Daniels. I mean, I it was a great time to wrestle. And, it, and I was younger, you know, and I, I did whatever I had to do. I, I listened to what people said. Sandman. There's a lot of people don't realize that Sandman and I were great friends back in the 2000s. I mean, I would talk to him constantly. There was a point where he would go to shows if I was on them, and he would not go to the show until the promoter called and said, Vegas is here. And then he'd want me on the phone to confirm that I was there, and then he would come to the, the venue. I mean, I got to work Dreamer back then, Raven. I, I had a blast. It was great. You know, at that time, I my it was all I wanted to do was wrestle. You know, and you get older, and you realize, you know, I'm not going to make the WWE now. You know, it's I'm past my prime. I, I had a lot of opportunities, and I'm not sure, you know, what exactly – you know why I didn't get signed? I mean, I went to some. I went to a tryout camp there at Heartland Wrestling when they had their developmental down there for a week long, and we sat down. and I was with Tom Pritchard and Kevin Kelly. And we're talking about money, how much you know 
if, would you be able to sa- survive on $500 a week? Well, shit, yeah. He goes, okay, well, get your bags ready. You know, we're going to be sending you to OVW. Now, I go back home. I, I quit my day job, and uh, I'm ready to go. A week goes by. I didn't I haven't heard anything. So I call them back, and they're like, ah, you know, Vegas, we're, we're, on, a, we're on a hiring freeze. <laughs> I'm like, well, shit, man. So I had to ask for my job back. And, uh, you know, I get discouraged a lot. And, you know, it was a good time, though, that, you know, I was wrestling, shit, three or four times a month. You know, we were going down to West Virginia on a Wednesday night wrestling in front of nobody. And that was uh, a lot of experience that I got with uh, Boomer Payne is down there. And, uh, you know, you you felt like a star, you know. And, and now, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it, it, I, lo- it, I lost a lot of passion for it. Um, it's just, it's sometimes it's not as fun as it used to be. Um, but back then though, it was something else. The talent is just unbelievable. If you look, just go back. Anybody that's new to the IWC, go back, get the videos, look at the results, look at all the people that would come through there. It's, I mean, shit, it was, it was a good time. It really was. We actually have a, uh, Trey's in the, in the chat room. He's asking, asking, uh, what matches would you put on a best of Jimmy Jimmy Vegas DVD? And trust me, I'm taking notes. Uh, probably none, because I am horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I am the worst. I, I don't know. Um, shit. Anything with me and Sandman, um, those were good. Um, the Raven match, I remember that was good. Um, Cabana and I always had a great match together. Uh I think there, I think maybe in hentai. I think it might be me and hentai match out there that was uh, pretty damn good. But uh, Dennis Gregory, anything with Dennis Gregory mm-hmm. and I uh, are my favorite. As a matter of fact, there was one he gave me a concussion, and uh, I don't remember half the match because I was out cold on my feet. And I went back and watched the video, and um, it was crisp. We didn't, we didn't miss a beat. I don't I don't remember it, but I watched it and it looked good. So. Yeah, me and the Founding Fathers, even Bob of the Bulldog, and I had some uh, some really good matches. Uh, and for those that don't know, Bubba the Bulldog, local uh, radio DJ, actually, that, that was one of the guys that, that kicked off IWC. Hey, Bubba started IWC. He is the Founding Father of IWC. Mm-hmm. Um, came to me, oh, shit, when was it? 16 years ago, you know, and said, hey, we were working for uh, PWX at the time. And we weren't getting paid. Uh, there was just a lot of, I mean, who wants to do this for free? You're, you're, you're killing yourself. And uh, he's like, I got an idea. I want to try to spin off and, and get the guys work. Uh, he's ta- he was talking to some, some TV people, RTN Studios. And uh, he's like, we need a place to run. And we're eventually going to get television. So I said, I'm in, dude. So I remember walking around McKee's Rocks. It was Boomer Payne and I and Bubba, and uh, we're walking through the projects, <laughs> hanging up flyers on telephone poles. I'm like, dude, I don't think we should be here right now. This doesn't seem too safe. But we, it was the Emerald Room was the first show, and um, I didn't actually wrestle on the first show. It was part of the storyline going into it that we were going to invade, kind of like the Outsiders type deal, and. Uh, we ended up going to St. Patrick's Day Parade and drinking our asses off and then going to the show and sitting in the crowd. And I thought, wow, it was a hot crowd too. You know, I'm like, this is pretty cool. So we, uh, we did the thing at, out in uh, uh, RIDC Park at RTN Studios. And come to find out later on that the people that were trying to get this wrestling show on TV, it was, they were talking about a Dish, Dish Network only station called The Man Channel. The man channel ended up turning into being Spike TV. So we, uh, I don't know what the hell happened. The footage is still out there. Bubba's got, believe it or not, Bubba has the rights. Uh, Plumber will, will, will dispute this to death, but Bubba still has the rights to the IWC. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So- uh, it, it, you know, Plumber said he's got this LLC thing, and, uh, you know, I, I just hope it never comes down to it, but um, he copyrighted everything. Mm-hmm. everything and he never sold it to norm he just gave norm the company and said here you go i just want the guy somewhere to work you know so that's when norm took over and uh that's when the, it, that's when it got became huge mm-hmm. you know so wow uh amazing amazing history there 
Uh, so, um, of course, you know, uh, uh, these is, you know, a lot of people came out, not just like through IWC, but a lot of people came out of IWC uh, through the training or, or locally here in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, of course, Corey Graves, former Sterling James Keenan. I, I saw you throwing him around in the promo that I've been running here while we've been talking. Uh, guys like that, Shima Zion, now Zima, DJ Z, I guess, these days. Um, can you speak a little bit to, you know, you're being part of that talent base coming from this area. What is it that's generating these these kind of stars wherever they end up as commentators, as people on TNA, WWE, uh, Ring of Honor? Uh, that, that that that's you know you know what what is it about the area and, and and maybe the training around here? Well, it's a wrestling town, man. Uh, you figure we've been there's been independent wrestling here for how long? Mm -hmm. Forever. Uh, throwing James Kane and he that kid had talent from the. He, he wrestled when he was 16 years old under a mask. You know what I mean? Uh, I remember because I wrestled him. <laughs> and uh, that kid, I knew he was going to be something special. You know, and when he was doing, I moved down to Florida and I always kept in touch with him. He was over in Italy and, you know, Europe and all that stuff. I thought, I don't understand why no one's picking him up. You know, Shima the same way. What a talent that kid is. You know, uh, I don't know. It's part of the training. I think part of it's just the, uh, the tradition. And the fact that, I don't want to say luck, the luck of the IWC, but we have some, you know, some lucky cats that come through here and train. You know, you got, uh, uh, what's his name now down in NXT? This new, it's a. Logan? The, yeah, Shulo's new, yeah. I don't remember, I don't know his new, the new name. It's, it's basically Sterling's little brother's name backwards. It was it? <laughs> <laughs> Elias Sampson or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, the drifter. <laughs> Samuel Elias backwards. Too. There must be some heat there or something. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's. I think there's just um, I don't know. It, I think it's just that people take this shit serious here, and it's not uh, you know, you live it, you live it, you breathe it, and there's been a few that have been very fortunate to go on to do what they do, and I see a lot of there's a lot of new guys now that. I see some potential in a lot of them, and uh, I hope the same goes for them as, you know, the Shimas, the Starlings, you know, the shit, Sam Adonis, Starling's little brother down in Mexico, killing it right now. Mm -hmm. Love it. But, um, yeah, I wish everybody the best of luck, you know. I just, I wish I had a little bit of that luck back in the day. <laughs> it would have cut me a little further, but. That's great. Well, tell me, are you watching anything today? Anything uh, wrestling wise catching your interest even, even a little bit here? I try to keep up with it. Um, I, you know, uh, it's going to sound very, very old, angry, that coming out of me. I, I see a lot of these young guys, these smaller dudes that are making this cruiserweight thing again. Um, I, I think I'm, I've always been a fan of the big guys. Mm -hmm. I, I would be a small guy in the, in the professional wrestling world that I would think is perfect. Back in the day when you had like big John Studd, you know what I mean? Most of those guys were, those were huge dudes, you know? Uh, who else you got there? Uh, Dino Bravo, you know, the Road Warriors, all monsters. I mean, I'm, I'm, you might want to call me a, a body guy, if you will, like, <laughs> but a big body guy, like big dudes that you never see walking down the street. Now you got these guys, they look like, you know, they're a bunch of CrossFitters that work at the local gyms, you know, and it, it's just, it, it, I don't know, I don't want to sound sour, but I think it, they need to go back to some, at least a few big guys. I do see that, that big ass, uh, I'm horrible with names, man. Braun, I'm like Denny Craig. Braun Strowman? Uh, yes, yes. That dude's a beast. But, um, you need a couple, you need a few of those, you know, and I guess the whole white guys, they're all big dudes. But um, uh, you know, like Lesnar, Lesnar to me is the, that's the ultimate wrestler right there. You know, mm -hmm. apparently, now I didn't catch it last night, but apparently Goldberg came in and squashed his ass in under a minute. <laughs> and I, and, uh, I, <laughs> I don't know that that would be some punishment or something. I don't know what that's all about. But um, I, I like the the New Day. I'm a big fan of those guys. Um, I like the. Uh, What's the, the 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 dude that comes out running around like he's all coked up with the Air Jordans on? Uh, Enzo More, that dude, uh, get a kick out of him. Uh, shit, I'm trying to think. Cesaro, I'm a big fan of Cesaro. 
I'm going to go. Me and Danny, we beat him in uh, uh, Chris Hero's ass a few years back. I don't remember that. <laughs> Which uh, I believe just uh, just showed up on the. We have a Claudio Castagnoli best of DVD that just came out a couple months ago. Nice. So, nice. Uh, check that out on High Spots and our <laughs> video, guys. So uh, there you go. <laughs> stuff, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to say interested anymore. Um, mm-hmm. You know, back when it, when it was hot with the Stone Colds, the Rocks, and everything like that, it. That was a great time with wrestling. Um, not, there's nothing now that's really catching my eye that makes me want to tune in every single week. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I don't have much of a life anymore. So <laughs> Monday nights, I watch it, a little bit of it, and then I'll, I'll try to catch up on it a little bit. I DVR it, you know, and just watch a little shit. Try and see if I can steal some moves at least. And uh, <coughs> they need to bring back Kurt Angle. That's what they need to do. I think he's overdue. Definitely overdue. So another guy that you've uh, encountered, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little story behind the angles. Me and uh, his older brother Eric have been good friends uh, since like '93. Um, I walked into a gym here in Pittsburgh, and I was and I, I was 150 pounds when I graduated high school. And uh, I walked up to the biggest dude in the gym, which was him. And I said, "I need to look like you. What do I need to do?" He said, "The first thing you need to do is get rid of them gloves and get some calluses." And that, that was our icebreaker. And uh, I was just with them, shit, three days ago. So I've <clears throat> been friends with the, the whole family. My, my dad and a couple of their older brothers went to high school together and stuff. So it's uh, you know, friends of the family type deal. So I was actually permitted to use the angle slam. Like a lot of people just go and, and steal moves. I asked Kurt if it was cool, and he said, yeah. So <laughs> it's actually my – I move first and then he can use it next. <laughs> awesome. Uh, question from the chat. Uh, I was showing a little bit of your pull apart here at uh, Clearfield uh, ca- uh, Carnage. Excuse me. I want to say cat yeah. Uh So uh, Trey wants to know uh, uh, how you're going to approach the uh, upcoming match with Wardlow, another big gun there in uh, IWC. I'm going to approach it with a straight right to his mouth. That's exactly how I'm going to. That's the approach. I'm just going to go in and. Uh, uh, if if you guys saw the pay per view last night, uh, the older big dude came in and squashed the younger big dude. So <laughs> it might that's probably what's going to happen. I'm not going to promise it's going to go down as quick and easy as that one was, but uh, it's going to be a war, you know, because I think his name has war in it or something. That's what they tell I've me. I've heard that. I've I've heard that somewhere along that, the that, way. That clown bar just likes to drill it into everybody's head that I guess this kid's tough because he's got war in his name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, last question we like to end with. Uh, what is the best and worst thing about indie wrestling? Best and worst. Uh, the best, I would say, is it's you actually get to live your dream. If you ever want to be a wrestler, uh, you can actually wrestle. You know, uh, you're a star for a night. You're a star in front of the, you know, if, if you're in front of 10 people or if you're in front of 500 people, you're a star. Uh, that's probably the best feeling in the world is you actually get to do something you always wanted to do. And you, you're, you're doing it for those, those fans and kids or even the, the adults that still believe in what you do. Uh, I'd say the worst is probably the pay for <laughs> <laughs> waking up the next day feeling like you were in a car wreck. Yep. That's it. Yep. Awesome. So if people want to check you out online, where can they find you? Uh, let's see here. You can go to Jimmy Vegas on the Facebook. Uh, you got the J Vegas 33 on Instagram. And uh, Jimmy Vegas INC at, on Twitter. Uh, I used to twit, twit, twat, whatever you want to call it, uh, a lot. I haven't had a chance to do a whole lot on it lately, but um, I'm going to fire that thing back up and start talking some shit, I think. I think it's time that I I start making myself vocal again and uh, you know become the man because I'm telling you what this is 2017 I'm gonna be the champ again, dude. I'm gonna be the champ, so I might as well start talking that shit now. <laughs> make it happen, man. Any advice to uh, uh, any young uh, wrestlers or people looking to get into it? Uh, just check out your schooling, man. Just make sure that you're going to somebody that's reputable. Uh, don't. If they have never done a damn thing in their life, 
and there are just some subpar indie worker that wants to throw a ring in the back of a whatever and teach you how to wrestle. You know, that, don't go for that. Try to get into somewhere where there's some people that have been around the business for, you know, at least a few years, uh, done some things, and uh, look at the track record. You know, look at, uh, look at the IWC uh, wrestling school. Look at the people that come through there. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of talents. And some of them talents are on TV right now. So I think it's a great place to start. Uh, if you're not in the area, you know, check out, uh, you know, I don't even know where the schools are anymore, but like, I know there's that monster factory out there. Uh, shit. I don't know who else is doing any schools, but, uh, the Dudleys, I think the Dudleys are doing a school down in Florida, but, uh, make sure they're reparable, you know, be safe. That's the, that's the thing. You know, be safe. It's a good extension of a conversation. Uh, a couple episodes before this with Bobby Shields, we talked a lot about making sure you're trained right in the right places and with people that actually know what they're doing. So I think that's a nice, uh, a nice addition to that conversation we had with him. Yeah, it's so. definitely a plus. You got to do that because the worst thing you can do is get hurt <laughs> before you even be, get your first match, you know? Yep. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Jimmy Vegas, see him, of course, in International Wrestling Cartel. I believe as of this release, he's going to be uh, coming up at IWC's Winner Takes All here in December, IWCWrestling.com for more information on that uh so and of course please go support the show subscribe to the show if this is your first time listening to one of these interviews we got so many more over 130 interviews with pro wrestlers and people that work around pro wrestling videographers promoters announcers everything of the like go to wrestlingmayhemshow.com subscribe to indie mayhem show and your favorite pod catching place or video provider like youtube or Facebook at the Wrestling Mayhem Show site, or drop us a line, 412-206-WMS0, or drop us at the email address at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Let us know any questions for any announced interviews coming up, or, of course, uh, let us know any indie wrestling you think we should check out or any other comments on the show. Uh, we appreciate all and any feedback. Thank you so much, Tragar, uh, Wheels, and everybody else that's dropped in there. Uh, Kevin, I see in there, uh, in the Facebook Live group. Stay tuned to that Facebook uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show account. We are uh, doing these interviews live. Could be any time during the week. And, of course, the main show is live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Look for some interesting new times uh, for the Christmas uh, season as well as we uh, end out the year. Thank you so much, Jimmy Vegas, again for joining us. And everybody out there, please remember this week to support indie wrestling. Oh, show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.